Most substances expand when you heat them. And if we start with an object which has length L, and I heat it up delta T degrees, it gets longer by an amount delta L. And that delta L can be expressed in a very simple way. It is alpha times L times delta T, and alpha is called the linear expansion coefficients. And the units are one over degree centigrade, or one over degree Kelvin, which is the same, because it's the, it's the increments that matter. The various values for alpha differ a great deal. I'll give you some values for alpha. I'll give you copper. I'll give you brass. I'll give you pyrex. I'll give you invar. And I'll give you steel, and they are in units of ten to the minus six per degree centigrade. And we will use some of them today. Brass is about nineteen. Copper is seventeen. Pyrex, three point three. Invar, zero point nine. And steel is roughly twelve, but there are many different kinds of steel. Invar was a great invention. Notice it has a very low expansion coefficient, which was very important in the nineteenth century, even today, to make instruments very precise, like clocks. Clocks are affected by the expansion of the gears. And so the invention of Invar, which is a, a mixture of sixty-four percent iron and thirty-six percent nickel, was invented by the physicist Guillaume in eighteen ninety-eight. And for this discovery, he received the Nobel Prize in nineteen twenty. Tells you something how important it was to get an alloy that has a very low expansion coefficient. If we use these numbers, let us look at the expansion of, for instance, a railroad. We take a railroad and we take a piece, a stretch of rail, which is, say, thousand meters. We take steel, iron, so this is the expansion coefficient, roughly, and we compare a cold day, not extremely cold, but a cold day with a hot summer day. A cold winter day, minus fifteen degrees centigrade, and a hot summer day, plus thirty-five degrees centigrade. So delta T would be about fifty degrees centigrade. So what is delta L? Well, that would be twelve times ten to the minus six times ten to the third times fifty, and that is about zero point six meters, which is about sixty centimeters. So what are you going to do with that now? How is that solved? If the rail wants to get longer and can get longer, it will start to bulge either in this way or sideways, whichever is the easiest. Well, the way this is solved is actually quite simple. When you look at rails, there are openings between them. They're very distinct. They're about five centimeters. When you walk along the rail, you can see them openings. And if you make these openings, say, five centimeters, then you would need twelve of them in thousand meters, so every eighty meters you would need a gap. And you can hear these gaps when the train goes over these gaps. It's a very typical sound. Because imagine when the wheel goes over it, you hear a certain click. You can see them and you can hear them, and that's the way they correct for this expansion and contraction. Bridges can be many kilometers long, and they have, of course, the same problem of expansion. And the way that that is dealt with, also very clever, as follows. This is a picture that I copied actually from your book. It's called an expansion joint, and there are many of them in bridges. And so what it allows the bridge is to do this, to breathe, so to speak, adjust to the temperature. There is a bizarre picture whereby the claim is made that this railroad became so warped because of an extremely hot day. 
I trust it, although it's hard to believe that it could be so bad. It must have been extraordinarily hot. As I mentioned, if a rail cannot expand, then all it can do is either bulge in this way or this way, whichever way is easiest for it. And apparently here, the easiest way is to go sideways. So you see a remarkable destruction, actually, due to an unexpected high temperature. I have here a brass bar, which is about 36 centimeters long. And I'm going to heat that brass bar. You'll see it there, too. The brass bar is right here. And we have a way of showing you the extension, even though it is extremely small, only a fraction of a millimeter. We can show that to you very easily. The way we do that is we have some kind of an amplifier. If this is the rod, and I would put here a hand, and pivot that hand here, then it's easy to see that if you push against it here, that this hand will go like this. So very little extension here will give you a large extension there. We do it twice, so we have two levels. And that is this arm. I have here a set screw, and I can make, I can move the bar in this direction. I'm not making it longer, but I can move it, and you will see what effect it has. has. If I move the bar one way, it goes up. Move the bar back, it goes down. You can think of this as a thermometer. It will be 70 degrees, as it is now. And if I heat it up, then it will get longer, and you will see this, this end go up. Let's go try that. There it goes. Doesn't take very much. So we have brass, and L is 36 centimeters. Delta L would be about one millimeter for a temperature increase of only 150 degrees centigrade, which of course is trivial for us with that blowtorch. Still hot. I could cool it. I could force it to cool it, and then I could even go below this point. This was our 70 degrees, remember? It was the room temperature. I can cool it with some liquid and see whether I can get it down quickly and even pass this point, which would indicate that it is shorter than it was when the lecture started. You see, it's now shorter. Now what you're looking at is only something like maybe a millimeter or even a little less. But we amplify it and we show that in a quite uh, convincing way then. 